Warriors. Today on the podcast, I had the great pleasure of interviewing Cody Sanders, the co-owner of Mix Hers. We talked about so many things that will help you, no matter your age or stage. I am so excited. Cody's knowledge on and expertise around our infradian cycle has helped me so much, my health and my wellness. And I was so excited to get her on the show. And I can't wait this conversation that did, did not disappoint. She gave us so much great information that we were not taught in our sex ed class in middle school or elementary school. And then so many tangible things that we can do to support ourselves and move forward in the most healthy way today. So yay, there are so many awesome takeaways from today's episode. I'm just going to jump right in. Yay. Welcome, Cody, to the Love Your Life show. Hello, it's so fun to be here. I love the name of your show, by the way. <laughs> well, thank you. Awesome. I am I am so thrilled that you are here because I wanted to have you on because you really, I heard you once say that one of your missions is to help women see their menstrual cycle as an amazing superpower that they've been given. And I feel that we get into a lot of mental drama and just lack of knowledge about our cycle as women that, that keep us from living that life we love. So I wanted so to- have you on and just help us all. You've helped me learn a lot about what's going on. So, oh, thank you. I'm honored to be on here. This is going to be a really fun conversation. I do love having conversations, especially with other like-minded women who get it and who are also passionate about helping women be able to live their best lives. And one of the ways that we can do that is by helping to support our health. And so that's what I'm all about. That's my whole mission. Okay. Well, could you tell us a little about if people have not heard of you yet, and if they're not actually drinking a mixer's drink out of their glass, like I am right now, <laughs> how did you job. get to be doing what you're, what you're doing? And, you know, sort of what is your background that led you into sure. helping? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a, like a windy road of where I got here, but, um, I've been in the health and wellness world for about 27 years and it started in the fitness world. And then I always had a passion though for nutrition and, um, and I had some background in some herbology and things from some other fun, like hands-on, um, training that I received from a native American that taught mm. me some plant medicine and things like that as a, as a younger girl. And so all of that kind of love and interest of how amazing, you know, what the world and the earth provides for us and how powerful the plants are that are around us and the things that they can do to help support our um, ability to heal and to thrive and all of that. It just was a huge passion. Um, but my background is I'm a, I'm a holistic health practitioner, a board certified holistic health practitioner and a functional nutritionist. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I'm a co-owner and co-founder of a company called Mixers and Mixers is a, it's a supplement company that um, has supplements that are designed specifically to help support women's um, hormonal health. Mm. So yeah, our, our most well-known product is a product called her time. Mm. Um, and it's a, it's a, it was the first to market, um, supplement that helped to give your body, your endocrine system or your hormone system, the nutrients that it needs so that it can function optimally. So it helps your body to naturally, um, have balanced hormones and be able mm. to, you know, function the way it should. And when we have that, then we actually don't have all of the symptoms that we often associate with the different phases of our life, whether mm. it's, you know, periods or whether it's going through perimenopause or menopause, all of that. Mm. Oh, that's so helpful. It's so great. I did not realize you had this background in plants too, which makes sense with your supplements and, and the ingredients that I I've seen yeah. in there. Um, that's really neat. And, and so I love this, you know, the, I, the, all of what you're doing and, and I don't feel, I mean, we might be of the same generation. I'm 50 and I'm, I don't feel that I was raised with this awareness of, of that I'm sort of a cyclical being. I mean, I certainly mm -hmm. knew that I got my period, but it was much more of this, like, okay, when it comes, you know, it's like, suck it up, you know, mm -hmm. don't say anything. Don't let anyone know, like, God forbid anyone sees you carry a tampon to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> let's yes. just pretend that everything's normal and it's just another day. Yes. Um, yeah. And so how did you get into sort of that, looking at the cycle of our lives and how that can yeah. help us? We're at the exact same age, same, you know, same experience. And, um, the way all this works for me is obviously, you know, when I was a, a teenager or like when I first started even learning about what was going to happen to us, once we, you know, yeah. went through puberty and all of this, you know, changes it, what there was nothing that was really taught other than here's a pad, here's mm -hmm. a tampon. It's, and I have three older sisters and all I knew about it was that 
it's the worst thing ever. It's mm -hmm. something that's really hard and you just have to deal with it. Here's some, you know, something to relieve the pain and here's a heating pad. And then that was it, you know, that was all it was. And so mm. luckily as a teenager, I did have some, um, some tough, you know, years of, of having heavy periods and a lot of cramping, but once I had children, I really just had a pretty normal period four days long, didn't have cramping, didn't have any of the issues. But then when I hit 40, mm -hmm. that was when everything <laughs> changed for me personally. Now I have been working, like I said, for years, um, I had my own practice for 25 years. So I worked with a lot of women who were coming to me and telling me, you know, all of their woes about, you know, how debilitating all of the symptoms were that they were feeling every single month. Mm. So I knew that was the case. Um, but then when I personally hit it, I was like, Oh, I understand this to a whole other level now. And so I, for myself was seeking solutions and, you know, went, I had some doctors that I worked with, um, and closely who I love and adore and everything, but the only options that they gave me really were pretty severe options. They were, well, you're in your forties, so you might as well have a hysterectomy, mm -hmm. right? Cause that's going to happen anytime now. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm only 40 years old. <laughs> right. And so there's that. And I was like, well, I don't think I'm, I'm okay with the hysterectomy. That seems a little drastic. Um, so then it was, well, we could do an ablation. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, that even seems a little drastic. Cause there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that you should be aware of when you are looking into that. There's some things that can be dangerous that I don't think get talked about enough, mm -hmm. some, some long-term consequences. Um, oh yeah. And, and so, when you're in the pain of it, you're just like, okay, fine. You hear a medical yeah. professional say that you're like, okay, fine. Well, yeah. absolutely. Cause honestly, I mean, I am a pretty open book, so I hope this isn't too much for your mm -hmm. audience, but I describe what I was dealing with every month, like Niagara Falls. Mm. It was what I dealt with was heavy, heavy bleeding mm -hmm. to the point where I couldn't even leave my house. And mm. here I was trying to run a business and help other yeah. people feel well. And I am like, I, this three, is right. you know, three protective items, you know, pads, mm -hmm. tampons, all the things. And I was still bleeding through my clothes. It mm. was really, really rough. So yeah, I was open to be like, just yank right. these organs out of me. I'm right. sick of it. You know, it's just, I'm done with this. But at the same time, because of my background, mm. I understand that these symptoms, you know, symptoms are just our body's way of communicating with us. So when we have a symptom, it's really important for us to kind of listen to what it's trying to tell us mm. and try to find the root cause of that symptom. And that's, that's where my background is as a functional nutritionist, as we look for root causes of disease. Mm. And so I knew that hysterectomy, ablation, and then they also were like, well, I guess birth control. Those were the three main options right. that they gave me. And I thought all of these are band-aid approaches and mm -hmm. yes, they will. I get it. And I was tempted and I was like, you know what? I just want relief. I just need something to stop this now. But then something inside of me, thank goodness just said, no, keep searching. Cause there's, there's gotta be something out there. And honestly, there wasn't really anything out on the market. Mm. that helped address. It was just symptom-based approaches. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I went to work and it became my full-time passion. So this, um, this product that I talked about her time, it was actually first formulated in my home mm. and, you know, and I was encapsulating it because I was getting all of these different ingredients, but I was, I just was searching the world for, you know, what is it that, um, our body needs, our hormone system needs that it's not getting now. What are these nutrients that it needs? Um, because the number one root cause of symptoms, and especially for like um, hormonal imbalance symptoms is nutrient deficiency. So mm. I knew, I knew, yeah, it's kind of a well-known thing. I think we all agree that we're not getting the amount of nutrients that we need. We're pretty nutrient deficient um, as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. just because we could be eating really the most amazing diet ever and just have all of the, you know, rainbow on our plate, but it's really hard to still get the amount of nutrients that we need. Mm -hmm. So so supplementation was something that I thought this could be a solution. Mm -hmm. So I really re researched to see what is it that we're needing? What are the nutrients that we're mo most likely not getting? And how can I find these nutrients and then take these nutrients and have, see how well they do together. So I really chose nutrients that were all natural plant-based. Mm. Um, and then I also wanted to see that they were powerful on their own, but they also worked synergistically together. So mm. there was a little more, um, bang for your buck, I guess. You're like a little scientist in your kitchen. That's all awesome. it was. Yeah. I, my team always teases me that I'm the mixer's witch because yeah. I am always, you know, doing these little concoctions. What now? But, yeah. yeah exactly. I, I mean, that, that is just wonderful. And that's, it, it's exactly like, yes, maybe the birth control or ablation or, you know, it, like that can help fix the short-term 
problem. I mean, or, right. but it's not getting to the cause of it. And I, I yeah. appreciate that. So I, th- yeah, for you to speak that to the point that nutrition, um, nutrient def- deficiency is one of the problems and one of the root causes. And then also, I think another part that I'd, I'd love you to speak about is just that we, we do cycle and mm-hmm. some of how, like, if we are just thinking that we're sort of on the same 24 hour cycle as men, and we exercise the same and we eat the same, um, that that may not be in our best interest. It might work when we're 20, but as we get older, uh, we might require some finer care. What, yes. <laughs> I love talking that. about this. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, part of my background too, is I was in the fitness world for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I've worked with clients either with fitness or with nutrition for many years. And so I've seen it hands-on, like all of these different, um, approaches to helping people become healthy and have the body composition that they're seeking. And, um, so we try all of these different approaches, whether it was, you know, this, this diet plan or this exercise, you know, strategy or whatever. And I would see that it would be amazingly successful for the men that I was working with. And then for the women, it would work for a little bit, but then it almost made things worse. And I'd be like, what is going on? I mean, the science shows that this is the best thing that we can do, right? Well, it wasn't until um, about 2010 that I actually discovered what was going on. And this was many years of me training and realizing, oh boy, I've been doing a lot of things wrong, especially for the girls that I was Mm -hmm. working with. Um, For your audience to know, I think this is just kind of fascinating it wasn't until 2005. That was not that long ago. I mean, especially for you and me, Susie, that yeah, is not no, like long ago yeah. at all, but it wasn't until 2005 that they actually made it um, mandatory that they included females in health studies. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, so you're like the science says, and it's like, but it's not science about you, yeah. honey. Right. No, it's science about men. Yeah. And so, because the reason is, is because women, because we're cyclical, like you're talking about, we're really hard test subjects because we fluctuate. So there's not just this steady baseline that you can see how it shifts up and down doing this approach. Right. Mm. So that's why, but now Mm -hmm. we realize that many of the things that are very, very effective for men are actually counterproductive for women because of our cycle. So let's talk about that because maybe some of your audience doesn't even know this information. I'm I'm hoping that I'm talking about this a lot and I'm spreading this word and I see other um, practitioners out there also trying to teach this. And I think it's awesome that the more we talk about it, the better. Yeah, Um, yeah, it's going to be for our our daughters and for, you know, the other girls in our life that are coming into this. Um, Yeah, we were taught that there's like, a period, right? Mm -hmm. We have a week long bleed and that, and we think that's it. That's our big main event, right? Mm -hmm. Well, actually there are actually four different phases that are very unique during Mm -hmm. our month long cycle. So as women, we have what's called an infradian rhythm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have our own special rhythm Mm -hmm. um, and it's our own special cycle. And it's very similar. Like we have the circadian rhythm. We're all familiar Mm -hmm. with that. That's our wake sleep cycle. That's what all humans, male, female, they all Mm -hmm. experience. But as women, we have also a, a 28 day cycle that is, is called the infradian rhythm. And within that 30 days or 28 to 30 days, depending, right. um, there's four phases. So the menstrual phase, the one that we're familiar with is just one, mm-hmm. but then there's the follicular phase and then there's the ovulatory phase. And then there's the luteal phase. And one of the things that was really cool for me to learn and was so effective as I started working with my female clients was that as I started learning about what happened during each one of these four phases of the monthly cycle, Mm -hmm. I could actually plan and program their training, their nutrition, um, how they handled stress, things that they, you know, other self-care things Mm. to be able to work with their hormones, depending on how and where those hormone levels were at certain times of the month. And they were, they've received, they had such better results because Mm. Because with women, especially Mm -hmm. it's not the calories in versus the calories out. Mm -hmm. It's not the go big or go home to exercise mentality that actually is effective. It's actually working with your hormones. Mm. So, and that's sex hormones and that's stress hormones. There's all kinds of hormones 
Um, so just learning just a little bit about your infradian rhythm can really put a lot of power in your hands, especially if you're a woman that is like so many others, that's just frustrated. That just feels like they're constantly on this roller coaster mm -hmm. of trying everything they can and then seeing no results and feeling like they're defeated and feeling like there's something wrong with them or, you know, they don't have enough willpower or whatever mm -hmm. it is oh that my we gosh, yeah. say to ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So just learning a little bit about each of these phases and, and what to do during every phase is really, it's empowering. It's pretty exciting and fun. Yeah. Well, um, it, and it's very different. Like for, yeah. you know, most of my listeners, if you're above 30, like you grew up in a mindset of like, exactly, as you said, like pounded out more is better. Cardio is queen, you know, yeah. all these, like you got to do it. And then to learn on the other side, you know, maybe you're doing cardio with your husband and he's dropping the weight and you're like bulking out in the middle and you're like, what is what? <laughs> to recognize yeah. that actually that that could be counterproductive. That's been hugely helpful for me. to yeah. Can you speak specifically to exercise, like how yeah. we might shift our exercise around the four stages of the cycle? I love that. Helpful or harmful? I, yeah, absolutely. I love that. So <laughs> the first phase I love to talk about is the follicular phase. And to make this kind of clear and kind of easy to remember. I like to compare each of the four phases of our monthly cycle to the four seasons Ooh, I do too. of a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the follicular phase is a lot like our spring phase. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the time that our body is like preparing fertile ground. It's like we start out because we just finished our period. Our, our, all of our sex hormones are pretty low. Okay. And what's also low is our stress hormone cortisol. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want you to understand that because then it will make sense to why I suggest certain um, exercise strategies. So when it comes to this type of, you know, strategy with your hormones being low, your body actually can handle a little bit more stress. So mm -hmm. this could be things like going for a long run or doing a HIIT training workout or doing something that, because exercise is awesome, but it is a form of stress, mm -hmm. right? Especially if yeah. we don't do it at the right time of our month. But so things like that, you're going to feel it. And I always tell women, I bet you anything your body's been telling you how you should move and how you should eat too. I mean, we'll yeah. get to that too, but, and you just have been ignoring it because you've been thinking that in order to get to wherever I need to get to, I need to do this, this, no this, pain, this no gain. Monday, Wednesday. Yeah. 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 So listen to your body and, yeah. and pay attention to it. So during the follicular phase, as your horm sex hormones rise and things, um, go ahead, listen to your body. You're going to have better energy. So your testosterone is going to increase your estrogen is increasing. Um, especially as we start get, then getting into our second phase, which is our ovulatory phase. This is the phase when we're most fertile. Mm -hmm. And this is the phase where I always tell girls lift heavy, like oh, okay. really, I mean, strength training, just so you know, girls, it's the best thing we can do all month long. It's it's perfect for us, no matter what phase we're okay. in, but in our ovulatory phase, go heavy. This okay. is when you're going to be able to build more muscle mass and muscle is our longevity organ. Mm -hmm. So the better we can maintain that muscle mass, the better we're going to age, the healthier we're going to be in the long run. So that's awesome. And this is the kind of time of it's the summer. I, it's like the mm. summer of our month and it's when we're feeling sexy and we're feeling like outgoing. We mm -hmm. want to go do stuff. We have like all this power around us. Unfortunately, it's the shortest phase of our month. <laughs> Not fair, <laughs> but that's how it is. And we go into the luteal phase and the luteal phase is, um, if you are ovulating, mm -hmm. it's the longest uh, phase of our month. And when mm -hmm. I say that, the reason I say that is because a lot of girls um, who are in birth control, they're not ovulating, right. or if there's an issue like PCOS or mm -hmm. other hormonal imbalance issues, you might not be ovulating. You might have what's called anovulatory cycles. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the case, then your luteal phase will actually be shortened. And that's kind of a sign that there's something going on that's wrong. And you'll, you most likely know, cause you're suffering with a lot of symptoms. Anyways, that okay. aside, <laughs> so <laughs> luteal phase, you're the beginning of it. The first half of it, you're going to feel great. Cause you're just kind of coming off of that ovulatory summer, phase right. <laughs> that summer. We're in that fall. So picture mm -hmm. how you feel in the fall, right? But it's very natural during this phase to start feeling that that energy starts to wane mm. and um, you're going to feel a little bit hungrier and mm -hmm. you're going to, you know, not feel like you want to go and do that hit. You, you might talk yourself into going and doing it, but then you're, you're not recovering as fast mm. after. And you're wondering why, and why did I have all this energy last week? But now this week I barely yeah. could get through a class, right? Mm. And it's because of our hormones again. So we peaked our hormones, peaked at mm -hmm. ovulation. And then now they're starting to decline again. And um, also well, then what's happening is our stress hormone cortisol starts to rise. So that's mm -hmm. why we feel that little bit of um, kind of less energy and also 
that increases our metabolism or the rate at which our body is um, burning energy. Hmm. And so that's why you're craving more food. Okay. So don't ignore that either girls. Like I feel like right. girls need to give themselves permission because you're burning about two to 300 calories more mm. a day when okay. you're in this in that phase of life. Period. Yeah. 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 And then the winter is um, our menstrual phase. And I always just say, move according to how you feel. You might want to just be a slug and sit on the couch. And I just say, give yourself permission, because mm -hmm. if you aren't feeling the energy to get up and move your body, then that could be a sign that your, your stress levels are too high and that mm -hmm. you're just needing that downtime to relax. And, and that'll actually be more productive for you as far as fat loss is concerned and things like that. So, so yeah, it's just, yeah. it's fun to learn these things and it's really it's fun then it's so fascinating. And like what you just said, that it might even be more productive for you for fat loss is not something we've been taught. It's more that yeah. like, no, 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 you need to keep going. It doesn't matter. Like don't sit on the couch. You slacker would be the voice inside yeah. most of our, most of our heads. And it's, I really appreciate what you're saying. So what I'm hearing is sort of the spring and summer hit workouts, long runs, strength training, yep. strength training, heavy in the summer. Mm -hmm. Then what sort of exercise in the fall? Yeah. Um, I mean, still with the strength training, but what might yeah. that look like so this is when i love walks i mm. love going for walks walks are great all month long too but yeah they're just especially just soothing and really good for our, our hormones when we're Keep just the body walking, moving yoga gentle. yeah maybe yeah. hike get out in nature okay do things that feel um calming to the mm. body not something that's going to be like rah, rah, you know like mm -hmm. rubbing because your body needs it's almost yeah. like it's preparing itself to hibernate right mm -hmm. and so so yeah, so think things like that, swimming, you know, things that are mm. low impact, a little bit more gentle on the yeah. body. Yeah, yeah, very helpful. And so yeah. how would you, so you sort of briefly mentioned eating. Could you touch a yeah. little more on how you might eat differently in the four yeah. seasons or four yeah. parts of our no, cycle? I love talking about that. That's great. Yeah. So yeah, again, thinking seasonally, it's kind of fun because the foods actually that you're supposed to eat during each phase kind of go along with what's in season during oh, each okay. of these four seasons. So in the, in the follicular phase, it's really great. Your body's going to want a lot of those um, greens mm. and a lot of that um, fresh kind of raw, you know, mm. foods, your body does really well with that. Um, so that's why you might be craving salads and that might sound really refreshing to you and smoothies mm. and things that are a little bit lighter. Um, and then in the summer, that's when, you know, it's, you're going to have like maybe a desire to have a little bit higher carb intake. So if you are eating grains or things like that, that's something that's the time actually that your body mm. will really respond well to it because it's got so much, um, energy behind it. Your body already is burning through it pretty efficiently. So that energy won't then you know, have excess energy that gets stored as fat later on. So your body will burn through it. Your metabolism's revving. Um, and then as you get into the fall, you want to think like the roots, the root vegetables, that's mm. what your body's that comfort food. Um, those carbs that come from our root vegetables are super nourishing for our adrenals and for our mm. thyroid. And, and they really help to relieve a lot of symptoms like bloating and cramping and, um, lethargy and moodiness mm. and all of these yeah. things that that come along, you know, during that phase of our, our monthly cycle. So, yeah. So if you can kind of think, eat with the season. Yeah. I really like that. I, yeah. The season the easy way to think about yeah, it. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. helpful. Um, and then, you know, speaking of stress, which you've mentioned several times, cortisol and stress, and then it's link to metabolism. I have a lot of women on here that I think could, you know, identify with the rushing women syndrome and they're oh, yeah. always late and always have a lot to do and always one more thing and one more person to take care of and one more kid to worry about. Um, how does stress or how does that sort of taking on the emotional labor for everyone else in our life, how does that affect our health? That's such a great, <laughs> a great description, emotional labor. Cause that is, that is what we do. And, you know, stress, there's good to stress, but it's the chronic stress that mm. we're dealing with. And like, I'd love that you're t you know about the rushing women's syndrome, because <laughs> that's exactly the, the lifestyle that we all lead. We all relate. Mm. And it's such a norm that we think it's the norm and it's yeah. like, what should be. But really, if we think back to like, even a hundred years ago, we're just, we're living in this state of like, like fight or flight all the time. So oh, let me yeah. just tell you hormonally what's going on with our body. Our body is designed, especially as women to survive mm -hmm. and to bring life to this world. And so that's, you know, that's what's Pretty going cool. on in our body. It's very, <laughs> very cool. Super cool. <laughs> but you have to think about it is if you're, um, if you're in danger and your body's sensing that you don't feel safe, then it's 
your body doesn't feel like it's a great time to bring a child into the world, right? Mm. So what's it going to do? It's going to adjust things so that you aren't as fertile. So things don't support like conceiving mm. and things like that. So any, I would say anytime your our stress hormones are high, our sex hormones go low. Mm. Okay. So whether you're in this phase of life where you're, you know, trying to conceive or you're beyond where we're, yeah. we're probably at, right. Um, still, we still have hormones and we don't mm -hmm. want hormones to just be totally shut down. Yeah. Right. And that's what happens when we're just constantly surviving, um, in this fight or flight state. It's just, our body's pumping cortisol out like crazy. And cortisol mm -hmm. is supposed to just wake us up in the morning, mm -hmm. kind of give us a jump start, And then mm -hmm. it's supposed to decline throughout the day. But unfortunately, so many of us have cortisol pumping through us all day. And then at mm. night, have you ever had that feeling where it's you're wired, but tired? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we all, and it's like, you're exhausted because you've been running around and, and doing all the emotional labor and all the stuff that you just said, but you can't sleep. You can't sleep well because your body's like, it's just has cortisol dysregulation is what mm. that's called. And, and so that's a huge, that's a huge problem and a huge cause of hormonal imbalance. So it's so important to work with your monthly cycle, like we talked about, learn about your infradian rhythm by just learning how to exercise and eat mm -hmm. and, and implement different stress relieving strategies with what's going on with your monthly cycle, mm -hmm. you're actually going to relieve a lot of stress and you're going to be sending what I call safety signals to your, your body and your brain, mm -hmm. letting your body know it's all good. I'm not, I'm yeah. not rushing. I don't, I'm not being, you know, I don't have the like, whole world down. on my shoulders. Right. Yeah. yeah it's calm okay. Down. Yeah. Well, if that isn't motivation for people to start, I mean, I talk a lot on here about boundaries and codependency and having, trying to have some conversations about passing off some of those responsibilities or emotional labor or letting other people have their own, you know, fallings and yeah. mistakes. That's, that, that's definitely very helpful. Um, yeah. what, what would you say for the, like for the woman who, like, if you're not cycling regularly because of maybe perimenopause or menopause or having an IUD, or you briefly touched on like birth control and, um, like what do, what do we do then with the cycle? Okay. So I think it's important for women to understand that if you are on an IUD or some type of birth control, what that is doing is actually putting you into a medically induced menopause. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you aren't actually cycling. Sometimes some birth controls will, um, provide like a, a week, a month, like a, a yeah, week's I was going to say like bleed. the birth control, they could still probably yes. look at it, but yeah, so people think that it's an actual bleed, but it's mm -hmm. actually not, it's not a real bleed because the main event of our month isn't our period. It's actually our ovulation. Mm. That's, that's where we um, are supposed to be looking at when we're looking at a woman's health mm. is how well they're able to ovulate. So if you're on birth control, you're actually shutting down the ovaries. You're mm. shutting down the ability to actually ovulate. So you're going to experience a lot of the symptoms that come along with menopause, right? Yeah. So that's why a lot of um, women suffer with that without realizing it. Um, especially if you're on, if you're on birth control for a long period, like more mm -hmm. than, um, seven to 10 years, you're more likely going to suffer with a little bit more, um, mm. debilitating symptoms yeah. and things that are super uncomfortable, but that's okay. What's important is, is, you know, yes, as we start getting into perimenopause and menopause mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, because our hormones, our sex hormones are starting to decline, it is normal and natural for us to eventually have some a little more irregular periods. Mm -hmm. That means that some months we will ovulate other months. We'll have an anovulatory phase, which is like what I was talking about, where we don't release an egg and that's normal. Um, but what we want to help you to be able to get through this type of phase without all of the crazy, you know, things that we're all terrified of the hot yeah. flashes, the, the, brain fog, the, the yeah, brain and also fog protecting our heart and yeah, mm -hmm. all the things that we're just like terrified of that doesn't have to be what our reality is when we transition through this phase. Um, mm. So it's important for us, even if we aren't having regular periods to still really give our body the nutrients that it mm. needs. So I talked about how nutrient deficiency is um, it's one of the main root causes of hormonal imbalance. The other one is um, toxic, like having too many toxins, so mm, a toxic yeah. load and um, our sex hormones kind of have a big part to play in this as well as mm. how well our liver and our gut are functioning. So if you're in this kind of state of life, whether it's you're on birth control or you're in perimenopause or into menopause, I always tell women, it's so important to love up on your liver mm. and love up on your gut. And if you can do those things, you will. And 
we're going to throw stress in there too. Let's right. manage stress <laughs> yeah. a little bit better because that's huge. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you're going to glide. You're going to thrive through mm. those phases without all of the symptoms uh, because you're giving your body what it needs. Um, yeah. Like I, yeah. Like what I said, I'm going to link in the show notes for listeners. I'm going to link, cause you have a couple podcast episodes on your own show where you speak of the birth control, um, you know, cause I imagine people are sort of like, well, then what do we do? And, yeah. <laughs> but also yeah. the toxic load and sort of what kind of chemicals we're, we're putting on our body and, and all of that is, Great. is very helpful when you're talking about your liver. Um, mm-hmm. that's something that is a question I have for you. Cause I heard you say that if we wait, I think I heard you say that if we wake up around three in the morning, that could be a sign that our liver is off balance or mm-hmm. work. Is that did yeah. I like, okay. yes, I love, thank you for Tell me more. Oh, yeah, I'm like, holy crap. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It's so there's different phases during the night. That's why sleep is so important and why yeah. we, as women get this time of life, we often struggle with sleep. It's mm-hmm. a, that's a, it's a common um, symptom, not a normal symptom, but a common symptom. And why it's so important to get the sleep is because around the um, hours between two to 4 a.m. That's when your body is then going and using its energy to detoxify and help Mm. clean the liver. Okay. The liver has just this huge job. It's just doing all kinds of things. It's our filter, but Mm. it does so much more than that. Like we know about that, but it does so much more than that. It actually takes everything that we take into our body and it tries to make it usable for our body. Um, but not every, is that, (laughs) I know, love love of of that liver. I am just the nicest organ. It really, we need to appreciate our livers. They do a lot for us, but it also then, um, it helps to like, if something isn't going to be used or good for our body, it then helps to like package it up to help get it out of our body. Right. Mm. But so many of us have, um, livers that aren't functioning optimally. And Mm. so the liver can't do the job. So what happens is, um, even with hormones, like once we have created estrogen, for example, um, we create estrogen, we're supposed to use it and benefit from those hormones. And then we're supposed to lose it because that liver is supposed to take it, use it, wrap it up, Mm. send it out the door. But if the liver is not functioning optimally, it can't. And so what happens is we become um, what's called estrogen dominant. And this is a huge cause of like the low libido, the Mm. night sweats, the vaginal dryness, the heavy bleeding, the irregular periods. I mean, it's like one of the most common hormone imbalances that women Mm -hmm. deal with. And a lot of times if we can focus on um, helping the liver function better, then you'll be able to reduce a lot of these issues because you can help, you know, like I said, use that estrogen and not just bring it in and then recirculate it Mm -hmm. and have it keep recirculating while your body's still producing more estrogen. Plus not to mention just all of the xenoestrogens that we're exposed yeah. to from our beauty products and from our plastics and our, you know, all of these ways that our bodies are just becoming overwhelmed with too much estrogen like mm. compounds and it's, it's causing disruption in our hormones. Okay. So in terms of protecting our liver, taking care of our liver, I'm hearing like watch what, and that's that toxic podcast I'll put on there. And then also sort of watch what's in our products, the stuff we're putting on and the stuff, you know, that it does matter. Are there other things we can do? Yes. Liver. Yeah. Yes. I mean, nutrition, obviously that's my love yeah. because I feel like food is medicine. I, yeah. didn't, pre- I didn't say that that was hypocrisy, yes. but yeah. yes, food is really medicine. And one of the best things that you can do, your liver loves, um, food that are in the brassica family or in the cruciferous mm. family. So things like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and, ca- and like kale and ca- mm. and cabbage and cauliflower and all of those vegetables that are kind of stinky, you know, mm-hmm. they have yes. that sulfur yeah. in it. So we need that sulfur because what that does is it actually helps to support, um, the proper detoxification pathways in our liver. There's, there's several, mm. there's a few, I should say detoxification mm-hmm. pathways. There's some that are ideal and optimal that we want our body right. to use. And then there's others that aren't, and we won't go too deep into that, but right. that, that type of food actually mm. really helps to allow that, that ideal pathway to be used. And it really is cleansing for the liver. It's very supporting for our hormones. So a lot of women, um, especially as we start getting into our forties and into our fifties, um, I say, eat as much broccoli as you possibly can. And it's really hard to do that, but there's another, I mean, we have, we have nutrients in our product, her time that helps with this because it provides a high level of these, um, really liver nourishing. Um, okay. That's in her time. How about the, her greens? Yeah, I was also going to say, but uh, we also okay. created her greens because that's what her greens is. Her greens is all of the greens that we should be eating, but we don't 
So yeah. we've got a lot of the cruciferous vegetables. We've got the grasses, and we also have some sea vegetables that really okay. help um, to help support the liver, support the kidneys, support the thyroid, support the gut. Has digestive enzymes in it too. So all of that is super important and mm. very effective for helping to reduce a lot of those unwanted symptoms. Okay, and alcohol. Yeah, alcohol is really rough. <laughs> you know, I know, girl. People don't like me to tell them to. I know, but that's why I'm bringing it up. I, I know. I am very vocal. I'm like, <laughs> we just need to be aware that like mommy wine hour is really. It's not setting us any up favors. for a lot of drama. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. It is and not a health drink. Alcohol, it can't be used by the body. And so what happens is when you do ingest alcohol, the liver puts the getting rid of alcohol out of your body as its first priority. Mm, so it puts uh, all this energy to trying to reduce the alcohol load instead of helping your, like do the things that's supposed to do with the food. So yeah. what you're finding a lot of times is that it's really, um, kind of clogging up the liver mm. and then it's also reducing its ability to break down your food and help your, your body be able to benefit from the power of the nutrients that you're supposed to, because you're not absorbing those nutrients as efficiently and mm. utilizing them as efficiently. So, so yeah, alcohol just gets in the way. I say, mm. you know, just be moderate. That's fine. You yeah. Know, but just know that it's not, there's some consequences and knowledge is power. Right. So I like right. that you brought that up. No, I'm super, is, I'm super grateful. And I'm, I mean, I I've done several podcasts on that and yeah, Good. moderation or none is, is very yeah. helpful for us as we as we age and just to see what what we're I think it's helpful to have the information of like what's helpful and what's not helpful because it's yes. it's some of the you know advertising out there is 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 a little confusing and it's like okay hold it's on. advertising yeah. they're well, trying right to exactly like they're trying right? to get you to yeah. buy their product or to do their hit workout every day of the month or so all of that is so helpful. Well, yeah. So, wow. You have been just a wealth of information. Oh, and I know my you. warrior listeners are just like, Oh, taking notes. I hope, or they can listen to this again. Um, so I nice. will put the links in the show notes for certainly the podcast episodes I mentioned, but also your mix hers products, because I, I love them. I'm actually moving internationally and I have been like storing up. My husband's like, we can take four suitcases. Susie, do you need all these like mix? I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> I love it. That's so awesome, Susie. I know. So I will put all those links in there. And I'm so grateful that you came on the show today. To Thank help us you. All. I just love this conversation. And you're just an amazing woman. I'm so appreciative. Like I said, I love girls like you that are out there just teaching and spreading and having these conversations because, you know, women, we, we, are stronger together, right? And yeah. the more we can help each other out, the the more successful we're going to be. And we deserve to have all the support we can get, right? So yeah, and there's so much of it me. that like you feel like something's wrong with you if you are like, oh no, actually this is your cycle. And yeah, you know, we just yeah, got to talk. We got to talk yes, more about the I love things it. that get it out been there. uncomfortable before. But now yes. like, no, let's, we're done. Let's stop going like that. Yeah, <laughs> done with sure. that. Yeah. Thank you, Cody. <laughs> Thank you so much.